Hey everybody, welcome to Storytime with John and Friends. I'm your host, John. Today we have another great episode for you. I met up with my friend Henry Menzel from Keep Flying. Henry plays guitar and sings in the band, and they actually just had a new record come out. Uh, coincidentally, on the day that we recorded this, August 15th. Yes, it's a little after that. However, the record is still great. Uh, give it a listen. Go ahead, give them a follow. Go see them on tour. They are out touring right now. And uh, yeah, Henry shared a bunch of stories from touring over the years. It was great to hang out and you know get to know him a little bit better. I have met him before, but this is the most the 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 most I've I've gotten to uh, sit down and talk with him. So it was it was a great episode. This episode is actually a little bit different than normal. Uh, I unfortunately was not able to get Henry in studio, but we did what we could. I got some new wireless microphones that were able to work with my camera and all my gear. So I met Henry at the Mohawk place. We shot an episode in the alleyway. It was a little bit different, but it was a lot of fun. It was pretty cool. So it's nice to try something different and it'll get better as we go. The more we do, the better it's going to get. Everything Henry's got going on will be down below in the description. Again, keep flying. The record's amazing. Daylight, great record. Uh, if you like what you hear, you like what you see, be sure to like and subscribe, share with a friend, share with a family member. If you haven't done so, please be sure to go follow us across all platforms. It's Storytime Pod, S-T-O-U-R-Y-T-I-M-E-P-O-D. It means a lot. It means the world. It helps me out a ton. So, yeah, enjoy the episode and uh, let us know what you guys think. You were pissing me on green every <laughs> day. The big ball of heat in the sky was too much. I thought there was a bear. The reality goes, yeah, fresco. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> hey, everybody. What's up, everybody? Welcome. Welcome to Welcome to Welcome to Story Time. Story Time. Story Time. So day 1, man. We are here. Day one, huh? This is it. This is quite literally the day that this is it. our record Daylight comes out. Very exciting. I'm very I'm couldn't be more excited to do it in Buffalo. Oh yeah, man. It one rips. of one of America's cities. I'm kidding. I like Buffalo. <laughs> I really like Buffalo. Yeah, man. It's uh, been very good to us. Yes. And we have a member from Buffalo, so it's like it, it it's home for him, so it's home for us. And uh, we, we've been really fortunate to build, like, a legitimate fan base here. Absolutely, so, man. Yeah, we played with you guys last time you were here. Uh, I was at Tennessee Hotel. It was so good. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah, um, unfortunately, we couldn't make this one work, but That's we're okay. in spirit. We're, all we're still in here at, Mo- at Mohawk Place, the beautiful alleyway of no, Mohawk Place. No one's ever seen before. <laughs> no, this is, this, is a, this is a very exclusive band here. This is their green room, I think. I think this is the closest to an actual, like, performer exclusive space absolutely and it shares space with the place next door yes. so electric ho- avenue electric avenue so we're <laughs> hoping that no doors swing open and hit this camera uh that because we're also next to the their walk-in <laughs> freezer so this is uh yeah so this it's kind of a makeshift this is the first one so first one at venue not in my basement well, we, the, the, we both the have big things going on yeah, I mean, absolutely. You, you're you're a is this your first child it's my first child this is your first child yes. so you're, you're you're you gave birth to a, a human being yes well my I wife get, did i, I did gave birth well no you you helped well you contributed at least a little bit i did well i mean i helped cook it <laughs> that's that's true that's true your your ingredients are key to the recipe yes, yes. so that's good and i and i gave birth to uh, songs. Yes. Great record. Equally impressive. Again, that came out today. I'm Sounds kidding. amazing. Love love everything. I listened on the way here. Uh, the harmonies, the melodies, everything rips. Songs are great. Thank you, man. Well, for, for the uninitiated, this, we're recording this on August 15th, right? Yeah. Yes. The day that uh, uh, Keith Lang's new EP Daylight came out. So yes. I'm going to keep saying it. I oh, really, I really you. want, I, I really want everyone to know that I'm just a walking commercial. Listen, that's all. That's, that's what this it. is for. That's what this is all about. It really is. Yes. <laughs> At the end of the day, <laughs> hopefully it's an entertaining commercial. But that's that's the way it goes. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, bro. man. Thanks for coming excited. on. So you told me you got some stories. I made note. Okay, so um, I, I I suffer from several mental ailments. One of which uh, prevents me from being very like having a decent recall. So I 
I made notes, uh, which is so if you see me look down at my phone, I'm not not paying attention to you. Totally acceptable. I am. I am absolutely looking at my my notes to remind me of stories that have happened to me um, or my band in my my 15 plus years of touring. So, yes. So where should we where should we start? I feel like we should try to find an organic way. Hmm. To get into some stuff, because I, I I wrote down some positive ones, I wrote down some not so positive ones, you know, because I think like everybody's got yes. horror stories, absolutely, you know, if, if they're on the road, but you can sprinkle them in between here and there, you know, all you right. want to split them up, all right. So let's take them on a roller coaster, right? So all right, let's see, <laughs> let's see. Um, so the very first thing that I thought of when I was trying to, uh, you know, conjure up some things that happened to me, um, well. For for again for the audience, I have a I have a touring acumen of about I think actually I said fifteen plus I think I'm at fifteen now I think okay. I've been playing shows for fifteen years on August fifteenth uh, when your record was released. Whoa, we're on some Taylor Swift shit, shit right here. <laughs> my number is actually my number is sixteen, but mm. I'll take fifteen if it Subtract adds one. the 15. adds the ethos. Very good. <laughs> People are crazy about that stuff, man. They're like it all adds up to third. She's crazy. Man. <laughs> they're like they're like Jim Carrey. Yeah, like in, uh, in 23, 23. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It, it, it really, it seems incredible. <laughs> anyway, so, actually, you know what's screwed up? Yo, I think it was the 14th, damn it. All right, so, <laughs> I believe, I believe this story occurred on, it was it definitely in August, but I want to say it was the 14th for some reason. I just have this in my mind. So, I was in a band before uh, the band I'm currently in called Keep Flying. Uh, I was in a ska band called... Uh, survey says and then um, based out of New Jersey and uh, so we would play like the greater circle of upstate New York all the time including Buffalo but also like you know Albany and Poughkeepsie and all that because right. we're closer to that area um, this is like this is the story I got go somebody you're always approached I like this podcast a lot by the way I think it's a, you do a great job um, but as a person who does what we do you're always approached by people like Tell me a crazy story. Right. And yeah. so I'll, I'll lead with the one that I usually tell people, which is, so on a day like today, it's, I don't know if you can tell, it's quite rainy. Um, very similar weather. Uh, we had finished a show. It was a very early show in uh, Poughkeepsie, New York. And so we were on our way back to New Jersey, I guess for the weekend or because I had nowhere else to stay. I was going back to my house. And we're driving a Dodge, at like that time, um, it was a Dodge Durango, I think. So for a long time, I toured in a Dodge Durango. Okay. Not a great call, by the way. It, it had three rows but of seats, but very small. Right, yeah. And we're a ska band, so you can deduce that... You had 12 members. At least, <laughs> minimum, minimum. So lots of stuff, lots of people. And so behind us was a trailer, so we, we could keep any of our shit anywhere. So it um, goes like this. So we were full... I'm driving... We're going down an exit right to get on Route 87, the beautiful New York Thruway. And, um, you know, there's like an acceleration ramp, and they give you plenty of space to get take off to speed so you can get on this very busy highway. So it had just started raining. So it's like that time when the concrete is just slick enough that, like, you're affected and your tires don't really work. Okay, okay. We all understand. I'm going to paint a really big picture of something. Perfect. That I'm sure your audience gets immediately, but I'm going to overshare. So we're going, we're going down the exit ramp. Very heavy, very full vehicle. Big trailer full of stuff. Big, not big, but a Dodge Durango full of people, including my fat ass. So stopping is a, is a, is a difficult thing to do at times. Now we're going down the exit. That's awesome. That is now, now, very unfortunate. It's, it's so cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go right in here so everybody can hear me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we're going down the exit ramp. There is a car on the other end of the ramp. So, you know, clearly my mind is thinking they're doing the same thing I'm doing. They're going to be moving onto the. Now, when you see a a car that's not moving, you ever be driving and you're like, oh, shit, they're not moving, right? Because you can't really tell. So that's what's happening here. I am going down the exit ramp. I see the car. I think it's going to move. It's not moving. It's not moving. It's not moving. It, I, I slow down, but then I have to throw the brakes on. So I throw the brakes on as hard as I can because I realize that they're just not moving at all. And then uh, I skid out. I hit them. So rear end of them, bad situation. 
We're now essentially on the middle of the New York Thruway because they're like at the end of the acceleration ramp, but not quite on the highway. Like we're on the highway, but not. I get out of the car. They're still not moving. I like, I knock on the window, like their windows are up. They're just chilling. Like, I don't know what's happening. Right. What? So I try to like, hey, I hit you. We're in the middle of a highway. Can we, can we scoot like over to the edge so we can like figure out what's going on? My, my vehicle is, the fluid is everywhere. It's very, very, very colorful. Cause I'm sure, some, I'm sure I broke something important on the vehicle <laughs> and I'm trying to get their attention. And like, I, I, they, they unfortunately do not speak a word of English. And so they're not really understanding. I was really hoping that the stress of my voice and, you know, the rain and their vehicle that had just been backed into or hit uh, would trigger them to like, maybe have some urgency right. to move. They did not move. So we're kind of just, <laughs> hang, we're just kind of here. Like, just imagine being on uh, the, the right lane of a major highway just standing, just standing there. So I'm pleading with these people for about five minutes, like, please, I need you to move so that I don't get hit again because if somebody makes the same mistake I did, they're gonna plow right into everything I own because it's all in the back of the trailer with expensive gear in it. So I'm panicked. As this is transpiring, a big van that we should have been in, like we should have been in an actual van, right? Yeah. But like a real van, comes speeding down the... Uh, the, the lane of the highway that we're in and um, did not move over. And so, uh, like, you audience are the car that I'm speaking into. Like, I'm speaking into a car window. The van comes and their mirror, like, smacks me right here. Breaks off completely. Like, just, it's like, it was like the worst slap I've right. ever experienced. And I didn't even feel it at first. But so, like, I, I, I got hit by a car, essentially. Yeah. I was that close, like it was, it was, you know, like Ford vans that kind of like hang out far mm -hmm. with the mirrors, like, but still I'm that close to them just, just getting my ankles. So I'm, I, I felt it. I didn't feel pain yet. I was, I was kind of like, what the hell was that? Right. And so, um, this is all happening. My van goes running after the van because they did not stop. They didn't really realize what happened. They came over. I'm like starting to feel the pain like two minutes later. I'm starting to be like, oh. And um, that they still have not moved. We're still in the middle of the road. Eventually, they got the sense of like, we need to move over so we can get our stuff off the road. We get off the road. The cops are called. Ambulance is called. I'm like, put, I'm put into a back in the ambulance. And uh, I don't remember much after that. <laughs> I went into shock. Because it, it hurt real bad, and I, yeah. I'm lucky that I didn't like break anything. Like I had an X-ray later, like like the next day, but I, I couldn't really move my arm all that well for a while, and I still had like three weeks of tour left, so it was awesome. Now the postscript to this is that when the cops came and they got the story, I explained to them everything I just explained to you, and what ended up happening is that. Months later, I got a ticket from the uh, the New York State Troopers for following too closely to the guy that I hit who was not moving. Um, I did not pay this ticket. I did not go up back up to Poughkeepsie to go to court like they asked me to. Ever? Uh, no. No. Okay. Absolutely not. I just, I just refused. And if, if anybody from, like, New York State Traffic Authority is watching your podcast... This is all allegedly. This could be, it's a Come story. On. That's true. This could all be <laughs> embellishment. I'd have a hard time believing me too. But if you do work for them, sorry, yo. You can come find me if you want. I'm not going to Poughkeepsie for any reason, really. Um, it's, it's, it's a difficult place to want to go to. So um, that that is like, that's my go-to crazy story and probably the worst injury at so did like did you tear any ligaments or anything in your shoulder no um very lucky I, i'm very lucky yeah. it just it it swelled up pretty bad uh like i said i mean it, it it felt from what i can recall anyway it felt like the the just a 70 mile an hour <laughs> smack smack yeah and um I'm lucky that it didn't really like nothing unsustained right. any breaks or anything like very that lucky. I, I just, it just hurt like a, like a, sh like a motherfucker for a while. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's, that's like, 
That's the story of how I got hit by a car. That's <laughs> that's wild, man. That yeah. Is, uh, that's. And got a ticket for it, which is which is why I'm like ultimately so I'm still I'm still upset. I'm still yeah, angry. I would be too. I listen. This is why I'm not a big fan of New Jersey. This the only York, place dog, I've ever gotten. New, this is New York, bro. No, but uh, I'm saying, uh, me personally, New no. Jersey. I it's the only place I ever got a, a ticket, which is why I'm just like, ah, that. Fuck, I mean, fuck it. I, I took a left hand turn when you shouldn't have. My GPS said to do it. Oh uh, well, mm, cop was right behind us. Whatever. Oh, You've man. all heard the story. I've done that. <laughs> I've also done that. And yeah, the cop was directly behind me, and I was like, dude, yep. give me a break. He's like, where are you going? Baltimore and never coming back here. I don't think I ever paid it. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> no. No, maybe I did. I don't know. It was Forget so long it. ago. It goes to collections eventually anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I also use that tale to emphasize my bad luck with um, just, just, just police uh, – I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not police in general, but specifically the traffic authority. Right. I have, I have not committed any – major crimes to my knowledge but um it's i i just like even in group being in new jersey like i've i have given thousands of dollars like like thousands of dollars to in tickets in tickets wow. and stuff like it's a cycle that you fall into i don't know if this works in every state this is somewhat related to tour but whatever i go on tangents so um it's like if you get a certain violation at least in jersey you have to take care of it or they suspend you, and if you if you get suspended, you get another like ticket. So you have to pay that on top of on top of on top. And I would just always be in this cycle of getting my license restored, right? And then even I think even after you get it restored, you have to pay something else to make sure it doesn't go back into being suspended, right? And like I would miss that payment because like I spent my entire twenties touring. Like I was not on paper. Like I was not a person. Yeah. Until I was maybe 28, maybe 30. Like, you, you know, you have no credit history. Mm -hmm. You have no, um, you know, you don't really have like a real steady or comprehensive work history. Like when you, when you kind of enter the workforce after high school, if you don't go to college, like, you, you know, it's like I took a, to, to anybody who's like normal, it's like I took like a giant gap in my life mm -hmm. and then reappeared to be like legitimate. Because, you know, anything I did under the it was under the table or off the books, right. like I would get jobs in touring on top of just being in my band that toured way too much. And still, I tour way too much. But, like, you know, I, that's, that's the only record of things for me. It's like, at least in Jersey, it's just this, this never-ending list of, like, traffic violations. They threatened to put me in jail. I went you to, must have a lot then. Or I, had a lot. Yes, I did. That's wild. I did. Like That's I went crazy. to, um, I don't remember specifically what I did wrong, but I remember going to a courthouse and having to speak with the prosecutor and he straight up was like, look, you're, you're looking at this much money and potentially seven days in jail. And we're not, we're not, I didn't hit anybody. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Guys, I didn't hit anybody. Like I, like nobody sustained any injury due to my driving. I just was always like behind on some sort of like insurance thing or I didn't have my, my registration or some shit. Like it was always stuff like that. It was never, you know, it was just people trying to get a buck and you weren't paying it and they were pissed. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, no, I paid. Trust me. I paid. Cause if you don't pay, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you, you don't, you don't drive. You don't right, lose yeah, your yeah. license. That's it. And in Jersey, they give a shit. I, I've lived other places since then. And, and, it's not nearly as much of a big deal, but like I paid, I paid a lot of money. And like the, the prosecutor's <laughs> like, the, the judge could say that you could go to jail. Like he's, it's, he's within his rights to say, you're going to get the max penalty for whatever the hell I was in there right. for. And it was like seven days. I'm like, at that point, they're just trying to make an example of you kind of thing. Though. Maybe. I mean, look, I'm brown. So. I'm ser I mean, like, seriously, like, it, it's for real, man. Like, it is, it is for real. And I have been, yeah. And, like, depending on where we're at on tour, like, the same thing runs into, oh, I just thought of something. It's not even in my notes. I just thought of another one. So um, I, got pulled, I got pulled over in Illinois. And same story. Like, they just, I mean, it's very possible I was speeding. It's very possible. I doubt it. But I, it's very possible. <laughs> very possible I was speeding. And they gave me a ticket, and it was a mandatory court appearance. And I was like, I, I don't live in Illinois. Right, yeah. And I don't ever plan on living in Illinois. And then, like, well, too bad. And I was just like, well, 
And you got to remember, I, I like I, this is a time where they have no. I don't really have any steady money. Like, I'm just I'm just a touring guy. Like I just I lived on the road. Like my old man played like 200 shows a year. Right. So what we, what did he, who did he play with? Uh, I was, Survey says was the name of the band. Okay. Like, it was like a, but we we even though Key Flying is a very very busy schedule, um, it pales in comparison to the amount of amount of days that I was just on the road in my other bands. So it's like. Um, and we didn't really, we, we got somewhere, but you know, whatever. This band is way better. Anyway, <laughs> so we're, we're on tour and like I got pulled over in Illinois and I just was like, I, I cannot go. Can I, I asked the cop, like, can I just pay this? Like, I, I can't come back here. Like, I'm not right. going to come back here. He's like, no, you have to show up. So I didn't show up. And so my, my goal, my, <laughs> my method was just not to drive whenever I was in Illinois. So like for the remainder of, I don't drive in this band anymore, but like for the remainder of any time I was driving, I just would be like, oh, we're in Illinois, pull over, yeah. somebody else take over. Because yeah. I figured that if I did get pulled over again, I was going to get arrested. Now, so. whose whose name was the van in? Mine. See, it doesn't, see, I so, thought the same thing about New Jersey when I got pulled over and never paid it. Mm-hmm. It was in my name. Mm-hmm. So had I got, they pulled us over, they know I'm in the van. Mm-hmm. Kind of, yep. you know, fucks you in the end. That's true. <laughs> That's true. So I've, 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 the only law or legal issues I've ever had have been related to driving and, and most of, most of which happen when I'm just going back and forth for right. shows. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's, that's, uh, yeah, I've been beaten into submission now driving. I, I, I drive very slow. I'm very, i absolutely, there's not much more you can take from me at this point. So right. I'm just like, I, I, yep. I look at a sign and I agree like 60 miles an hour. You got it. <laughs> not a single mile per hour more smart, so, uh, smart. yeah so that, that's that's that <laughs> so you learned your lesson basically i did i did they got so you there you go they okay. got you okay penal system <laughs> i am a law-abiding citizen now apparently <laughs> I was such a horrible dude before um, how dare you I just I do this like I, I wish i had done something horrible I right. don't. This is all a joke. But like, <laughs> people are people are wild, bro. You gotta you gotta you gotta couch it with something. Like, <laughs> did you hear what that guy in that band said? Let's get him. That's the clip. Yeah, that, that, That'll be the clip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is he in a band that has no salary and like he's just following his dream? <laughs> he's a performer, so at times like he might embellish things that he says. But we're gonna take this really seriously. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So no. And the reason why I say that is that. I wish that like, I don't really wish that I would like actually have done something fucked up driving, but like I can justify paying the price for that. Yeah, I'm yeah. like I shouldn't be in. I shouldn't be borrowing money from my family or something to be like, hey, uh, my insurance lapsed and I got pulled over, and if I don't pay this massive ticket, I'll never drive again. Can you please help? <laughs> I, I would. I would feel more justified. Have been like. Hey, I uh, I careened into an elementary school. I'm sorry. Right. And then it's like, yeah, maybe she. Yeah. Hey, you know what? You got a point, <laughs> prosecutor. I, I probably should have done that. So I don't know. That's, that, that's me. But that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> Love it. So uh, what 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 else we got on the list here? Are we just gonna run down my list? Let's just go, man. This All right, is, man. Uh, let's see what we got. Kind of kind of how we do it sometimes. Oh, that's that's fine. Rip that's straight fine. through. Yeah, dude. Interject in between. Sure. All sure. that kind of well, stuff. I don't want to bore you. I'm, just, oh, I'm trying to be. Never I try bored. to be. I try to be like, you know. This is perfect, man. This isn't my show. <laughs> it you is today. I mean? Well, I'm, well, you know. I'm, but I'm, On August 15th, the date of your new release. Keep flying. Daylight. It's out. It's, it's great. great. It's not very long, but it's very good. And you should listen to it. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, I got kicked out of El Corazon in, in, in Seattle. That was cool. Be nice to sound guys. That's that's. Were you playing? You were playing. I was playing. So, yeah, I, like I, I've come a long way in in my 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 personal you know like my growth journey. Right. And um, the the road, if I may take a second to be introspective, which I do all the time anyway. The road is a tough place to learn how to the road in general and the music industry and more specifically the music industry as a diy like punk musician Mm -hmm. is a very interesting let's say and maybe maybe not the proper place to like learn how to be a person 
See, it's like I don't I don't think you need. I don't think if people can choose whatever path they want to go to, and this is the same debate that every person who does what we do has, which is like, do I do the traditional route, college, workforce, you know, the same, the the the, but the American dream, right? right? Um, I never, I knew from very young that like, nah, not yet, not yet. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of there now, but like at that time, I was like, no, I have a lot that I want to do, and. Um, but what I didn't really factor in or understand is that there's a safety in choosing, I don't want to say the easy path because there's challenges everywhere, but like the traditional path, there's a safety net. And it, 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 let's say emotionally, like it's not as chaotic, well, you know, for the most part as just kind of being a vagrant on purpose and, and trying to, you know, cause as a, as a DIY musician, you're not just a person who plays guitar in a band or sings right. like, you're a small business owner. You're a you're a you're a PR and marketing team. You mm-hmm. are you're a performer, but you also have to be you have to have some sort of you know business savvy that there is no class for. There's zero class for it, and um, you know. So I've I've changed as as years have gone by, and I think that I'm I know how to treat people better now, and I think I know how to um, operate within professional music spaces. And at one point, or maybe several points in my life, I didn't. And so, like, um, the only time that I've ever been removed forcibly from a venue was uh, in El Corazon in Seattle, Washington. Cool place. I've been, I, I have been back, so I'll, I'll, I'll spare the, the, the suspense. <laughs> it's not like I'm banned. But, like, um, I just, one night, I was just, uh, I was really stressed out. And, um, there's just times when you go from room to room and city to city and you see massive amounts of people all the time. It's mathematically impossible for you to feel like you're going to gel with every single person. And I'm not that guy. So me and the sound dude, like you you ever just meet someone you're like. I'm just not feeling this guy. I like this dude. Right. Like, like it's, it's almost instinctual. Right. It, it could be wrong. Mm-hmm. You never know. But w- when, when there's packs of animals that are out in the wild, you know, I'm sure that they, you know, either prey, predator, whatever, mm-hmm. there's something instinctual that happens. And I don't know exactly what it was with me and this dude. But Vibes like, are a real thing. Like, 100%. if you, you could feel, if somebody's putting off a vibe, you feel it. Yes. 100%. Yes. That's true. And I think even for a while, I really kind of like, denied that right I, I, I denied the vibe that i put out right i'm kind of um despite how verbose i'm being i'm a little bit i'm pretty closed off like i'm really like oh, don't, oh, don't look at me like yeah. i'm really I, i'm like in, which in, is why you're the front man of the yeah that's why i chose <laughs> to sing and be like the guy who does all the talking and all that shit great <laughs> idea well i'm able i'm able to kind of like move within this way and it's performative is different than like being disingenuous. So right. I'm, I'm not lying to you. Like this is me, but I'm, I'm just the kind of, I'm a type of personality that really will go from one extreme to the other. Like after this, I'll try to not talk to anybody for at least two hours. Cause I'm speaking a lot. Right. Yeah. It, like I have a social battery and it mm-hmm. goes quick. So anyway, <laughs> I go on tangents. This is I, I, I'm warning your audience as if they don't already know. This is what I, people love. Yeah, well, good. I'm glad because like <laughs> this is I, I like this, and it's but it's partially why I've never started my own because right. I'm like I don't want to hear me talk. Well, for, see, I, I'm all. not doing the touring thing anymore, so I'm like, fuck it. I got to be in the music somehow. You there know? you go. So well, I'm, I'm glad chatting with friends, hearing stories. Here I am, brother. Shooting the shit. I'm here to talk <laughs> over and over again. Over. Where was I? Oh, El Corazon. Yeah. So. I think what I was trying to preface everything with is that I'm no longer as much of an asshole. Okay. So we weren't vibing, right? And with a sound guy, you have to you're you're partnered up. There is not like there's no scenario where you can just avoid each other because he has a job to do, you have a job to do, you have to gel to a certain extent or you're not going to have the outcome you want on right. stage. Neither he, is he. He has more power over you than you over him due to the fact that while you're playing, he can fuck your shit up. This is true. Yeah. So, you know, and, and it's a matter of, I, I try to look at it as more of a matter of respect than power, but the power is there for sure. Correct. So <laughs> I was not being respectful at this time. 
We weren't gelling. I don't know what the problem was, but I wish I could remember the intricacies. But his vibe wasn't working with me. I wasn't working with him. Like we instantly were just like, we're not talking good. And um, I, 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 I've done. I did. So, I back in the day. I didn't do it very often, but like I t- played enough that like it just felt like every day was the same. And w- when you're in that rut you stop caring so much about every single outcome of every single show. Right. And I was losing, I was losing sight of the mission for a mm-hmm. while. And I, I, I definitely was just angry on, I was just angry on stage. Just live it. Live it. Yeah. So mad. And I, I could not hide it. So I just kind of, I kind of let the dude have it like, on stage in front of people. Oh, so, yeah. so while he has the power to fuck up my shit, on the other hand, you know, I do have a microphone in my hand. Very true. And I could very, very simply just, just rail on this dude, which right. I think I did. And I think it, he cut my set short and I was really pissed. And I like, I got off stage. I was so mad. And like he, I saw him like the second I put my guitar down, I got off stage and he just starts coming at me. And I go at him and. Luckily, the security was right there and broke us up. It never really got physical, but like mm-hmm. it was like shouty, like, rrr, rrr. and then security. It's the only time I've ever had security just push me, like, <laughs> you gotta go. Right. And I got out and I was just, I walked around the city of Seattle for a while. <laughs> I, I called, I called friends. I called, I called my mom. I called, uh, I just called people. I'm like, can you believe this guy? Yeah. And somebody, as part of my mom, was like, well, what did you, you realize you're part of that equation, right? Like he didn't just decide the, to hate you. You know what I mean? Like you, right. everybody plays a part in one way or another. So I calmed down about an hour later and I tried to walk back to the venue and like they, they did not want to let me back in. They were like, no, like instantly they saw me coming. <laughs> they, they just hopped back out. Like security was like, absolutely not. I'm like, look, please. Like, I, I just want to, like, I want to apologize to the dude. I just want to be like, cool. And I, I don't think they let me back in, like, mm-hmm. you know, but that's the only time I've ever, ever been kicked out of a venue. I've never been kicked out as a patron. Um, but I, uh, I was kicked out then, but that was, that was a, a, a point in my life where I was like, all right, I really need to, I can't be this guy. Right. Yeah. But, you know what I mean? It really, especially it like, so this shit that for those of you at home who have never toured and done this, it, it wears on you because not every show you show up to is going to be 50, 100, or 50 to 100, 200, 300 people, like, you know, depending on where you're playing or how big your band is. And that shit wears on you. And mm-hmm. that I definitely have had that those moments. You know, we've played, we've played shows where we're like, all right, let's go home and sell the van. And then we did it. <laughs> right. We did it one time, you know. Right. Was just, we had had enough. But it's uh, so I understand where that anger comes from yeah, you know yeah and on top of just being um kind of i don't want to say unstable i'm okay but like but I, i'm i'm fine i'm fine aren't all musicians a little unstable well, that's kind of the point i'm getting right, at yeah. which is that to a certain extent um the common thread that i find amongst let's say the, the most the more successful uh you know individuals that make it in this world is that there is there's a part of you that's broken to begin with so For it's sure. like you know, your goal in order, in order to stay in it is to just mitigate how much that, that broken feeling is out there and that it doesn't affect you from, you know, getting better in some, some respect. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and again, like I said earlier, I, that's a time it, it, I, I, I kind of had to raise myself. I lost my dad a little bit early in my life and uh, um, I kind of had to make my own role models into right. adulthood. Yeah. And that's hard to do when you're we're already kind of living a chaotic lifestyle to begin with. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I've never been like a drug user or something that would really, you know, inflict more um, chaos into an already chaotic world. Uh, but I have a pretty chaotic mind. And so it's it was pretty difficult to wrangle all that together right. in my 20s. Uh, while being a person who is pursuing this whole thing. For sure. Know? But it, what's important is that you grew from it too, you know? Like you've, 
You're not, like you said, you're not an asshole anymore. As, no, as you were. No, not as much. I'm, I'm, I'm still, <laughs> we're all assholes. Right, right just... exactly. Like I, I think I'm still, I think I'm still me. Right. Yeah. Um, but I, I definitely, um, you know, I, I have my my own mind together. And going back to what you said about vibes, unbeen, I don't think unbeknownst to me, I was putting out vibes back then that I was kind of unaware of, and uh, I didn't do enough to, you know, to really, to really actualize that and like really understand like what it is that the the, the part that i'm playing in all of this mm-hmm. you know and um comes from a very uh negative like anti self-esteem whatever the opposite of having self-esteem is and like i have zero so my my go-to usually is to just negate my own feelings right or negate my own existence or to that end negate my own ability to affect social situations right. so i it's like so for me i don't matter to me so therefore what i'm doing doesn't really matter that's not true right like in real life and not in my head all of this is happening you're playing a part in this so you have to realize that you're you you have a role in this whether you like it or not i have a very if i had my own way i would i would live on my own in a in a, in a hut in wyoming n- nowhere near anybody um but i can't do that because then I can't do music and I can't, you know, and I can't mm-hmm. be in the relationships that I want to be in or, or participate in my own life. Right. But this is just a part of me that exists. Um, and that would come out every now and then. But I've learned <laughs> to, uh, you know, to, to mitigate all of that and, and not take it out on anybody else. <laughs> and right. Like, like poor sound guys in Seattle. But I want to thank that guy because, you know, he he gave it back to me as good as I gave it. So, you know, it's a it's all part of the it's all part of the journey. Lesson learned, right? There you go. <laughs> yeah, man. So what uh where's your favorite place to play? Favorite show? Ever? Yeah. But when I say that, the first thing that comes to mind. Um, okay. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I do. Like yeah. someone goes, What's your favorite movie? And they go, I don't know. Well, what's the first thing you just thought yeah. of? Yeah. Something uh, popped in your head. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Um, so I have a top five. That's not the question you asked. So, what's the question? Yeah, I got it. I got this. ADHD, bro. <laughs> so, on that. dude, it's, it's, it's the worst thing. It's the worst thing ever. Yeah, I don't know. It's my superhero. <laughs> uh, my superpower. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it is not. <laughs> anyway, hold on to start. No one's there. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind was um, my, my, I don't think it was our first support tour, but. Um, my, my old band, like I said, is a band called Survey Says. My current band is Keep Flying. We just put an album out called Daylight. Please listen to it. It's so good. It's out right now. It, it rips. It's so good, but all of my life is informed by my past. So I used to play <laughs> in a band called Survey Says, and we were like a ska band. And um, I've, I'm inspired by a lot of different kinds of music, but um, what really tipped the scale and like kind of made me move in the direction of you know, ska punk was Real Big Fish. And... Um, I got to, they, they, they invited us to open for them for like a month nice. uh, in like 2014. Very cool. And, um, and, and like, you got, you got to understand that everybody has a different level, like a barometer of like what they think the, the most important art or artist or band or musician or singer is. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that real big fish is like, you know, objectively speaking the greatest band ever but if it weren't for hearing their records when i was in high school like i wouldn't even be sitting right here so huge influence it, it is is the influ- to okay. me it's the influence like there you can name a million other bands and i i could and i i might but i won't <laughs> but i'm just saying like you just have a you, everybody has like a crystallizing moment in their head of like oh this is it, it's the being like i somebody handed me cheer up by a real big fish i remember when they did it I remember, I remember where I was. I remember what I was doing. I remember who I was with. They handed me the CD and like, you should listen to this. And like, it's just in my mind to me, that was me going on the path of where I am now. So it's like, I owe them everything. So to be asked to go on tour as direct support for the, re- for the whole reason you're here in the first place, like, it's incredible. And Keep Flying got to do it too. So I got it twice. That's so- sick. My life is good. So anyway, the first time, I think it was like the second or third show, they did this 
it's a very different kind of show for them because it was almost like a club tour uh, or theater tour. But like they did this big outdoor thing in Kansas City, Missouri, like at the the stadium, like where the Royals play, I think. And um, it was like five thousand people, and I've never, I've never been again. Not the biggest crowd anybody's ever seen, but it just was like it, it, it was. It was overwhelming. It was it was yeah. something that I just I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to really do again. And uh, it might have even been more than five, but my, my, I want to say it was five. It might have been eight. I don't know. It was something crazy like that. And I've just I've never seen that many people before, and I've never certainly never played to that many people before. And just looking out over everything and just seeing that like that's what I, I mean. I don't know. I, at that point, there've been times where I've I've been like, if I had to stop right now. I'd be good. Right. You know what I mean? yeah. And like, that was, that was one of them. Okay. So I think that I'll go with that. Cause it popped in my head and I still turn it into a 10 minute diatribe. <laughs> it's perfect. We want to hear, go I want to hear the go explanations, me. you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, favorite place to eat while you're out on tour. What do you look forward to the most? Oh, stop. No. <laughs> can I be on, can I, can I be honest with you? I appreciate Amy's. It's really, I, it's not that I dislike Amy's. It's just that, you know, what else does Buffalo have? I, I, I my band goes every time. Are they way. are they vegan? Vegetarian? They have they have vegans like we have vegans in our band, which okay. is great. I have no yeah. problem with that. In fact, I try to eat vegan when I can because mostly uh, it's better for my tummy, and like I'm not against the cause. I just I just really love cheese. Like I like it would be a lot easier for me if like never mind. We're going in a whole other direction. <laughs> Sorry. Um. So what what what. It depends on where we go. I kind of have, I kind of have different spots that I look forward to depending on where we're going. Um, uh, <laughs> I wish I could think of a good Buffalo one, uh, outside of my 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 slight uh, indifference to Amy's. Doesn't place. have to be just Buffalo. Can be anywhere. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, going with the the with the first thing that pops in your head in the South. West and California, my favorite burrito bar chain is there. So there's great b- Mexican food everywhere. And mm-hmm. I, I tend to go in that route. Nation, I feel like nationwide, you can find a good Mexican place kind of almost anywhere. Basically, yeah. Basically. Like, like, agree. like, very shockingly, some of the best Mexican food, I don't think the place is even open anymore. There's a venue called Mahal's uh, or May Hall's, depending on how you talk about it, in Cleveland, Ohio. Right down the street from there, there was a Mexican spot. Unbelievable. Like, like, it was, like I tell people about it. I am right here, your audience. And I'm like, wouldn't believe where the best Mexican food I've ever had in my life is. Ohio. Because that place is cultureless and sad. But so it's, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, okay. I'll take it. I'll, I'll, I'll spin it back for you, Ohio. I love melt. Okay. So like. Melt's great. I like, I like the regional spots that are either chains, maybe not chains. Um, usually because of money, I'm not able to like go to like the greatest restaurants. You know what I'm right. saying? But like, I'll go drop 15 bucks at Melt for sure because I'm in that area. If I go to the Southwest, um, I want to go to Freebirds Burrito. That's like, I love Mexican food. I love burritos. My second favorite food, and number one is eggs. And so <laughs> I just. Um, <laughs> Again, I have comprehensive list. I don't have. All right, look. I, <laughs> I my my personality is like this. I don't have like likes or dislikes. I have like utter passions, like go to war with passions or complete boiling hatreds. So I'm just I'm I'm not I'm either all in or fuck that. Feel so that. I feel that. So my <laughs> so I'm very passionate about stuff. And number two is burritos. And so, um, like free birds. <laughs> I, they're so dynamic. Listen, no, no. Look, listen, man. I am not hating on For my birthday dinner every year, I do Brinner. There okay. You go. That's my thing. That's good. All right. So I'm, I'm not hating on you. I just was not expecting that. Really? <laughs> I, I wasn't. I I'll just, give you a million reasons why. Let's they're go. incredibly dynamic. You could do with all <laughs> many different things you can make with them. Like just, just an egg dish. I could do a simple scramble. I could do a fried. I could do a fried hard. I could do a fried soft. I could do a poach. I could do. 
I, I could throw them in a sandwich with my favorite meats. I could throw them, and then the, then we can enter into the different breads we can make with those sandwiches. Make so, casseroles. Uh, right, I could make quiche. <laughs> They're incredible. The incredible edible egg. So anyway, um, on tour, <laughs> uh, I look for like the regional stuff. So like, I mean, everybody's like basic thing. I'm in California, I'll get in and out, but I do like getting in and out. That's fun for me, yeah. especially as somebody who's from the East Coast. So it's like, it's, it's more of a novelty. For me, I acknowledge it's not the best burger in the world, but but I like you're here when in Rome to do it. Um, you know, if I'm down in Texas, I get water burger. Probably not right now because my, my tummy is not good recently. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, this has to stop. So, like, I'm trying to get this under control. Um, so looks we'll, good to me, man. Stop. stop, stop, stop. <laughs> I've fluctuated. That's another thing. <laughs> Tor is, tour is real bad if you have like a chronic, like, you know, overeating disorder, which apparently I have. So it's like, you know, it, it's, it's tough to stay healthy. Yeah, that, oh, that, for is, sure. that is for sure. Like yeah. I, we're just like, we're just um, with a couple of friends from Chicago. They came out to see us in Pittsburgh the other day. And, um, for the four chord music festival, check that shit out oh, yeah. by the way. Um, shout out Mike. Shout, Tomasulo. shout out Mike Tomasulo, Eternal Boy. Yeah, shout out Richie Ball. He was Ball. on. He was on. Oh, I, I, that's why I, I heard it. He ah, yeah, hell yeah. Because I loved his episode. It was love that because he's my guy. That there is nobody funnier when they're pissed off than Mike Tomasulo. <laughs> it is like he it, like he kills me whenever like, I don't want him to ever be upset, but when he's like just in the moment working right. frustrated, he kills me. <laughs> he just love that. It makes it so. Anyway, what are we talking about? Food. Food. Yes. So. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So I got this. I'm there. Thank you. Um, <laughs> my friends in Pittsburgh, I'm sorry, my friends from Chicago were in Pittsburgh. They'd been on the road for like just traveling for three days. And they remarked like, if you have, if you're trying to not eat shit, it's hard to do. Like you either have to spend like a good amount of money to find somewhere healthy or like, or the options just aren't there. You got to really dig. Like mm-hmm. if you want to eat something that's not so processed or full of salt or full of sugar or full of carbs like you're hard pressed and these are things that i clearly love very much and so it's like if you're trying to cut that out it's it can be really it can be really hard for me like i don't really struggle much with alcohol um i don't even really i i eat weed sometimes i don't really love smoking um but my my vice is food right and um good or bad like it could be any like you know it's not even just like oh I overeat but I only overeat really healthy stuff or or really you know natural stuff I eat, I eat anything I'm I'm all in so you know as a touring person I I think that that kind of enabled me right to, yeah. to kind of not you know take care of myself as best as I could mm-hmm. I, I'm significantly smaller than I used to be um and then kind of all right like. like I lost like a hundred pounds a couple years ago. That's great, which is awesome. And like right before twenty, like in the beginning of twenty twenty, I was hot as shit. Like I was so <laughs> I was smoking. Like I was just like, oh, I was like, I was toned. It was dope. And then like, you know, depression. And so I'm like back up like fifty. So, but I'll get there, you know. But like, but I'm back touring again. Right. And through twenty twenty, I could actually kind of like hang on because I wasn't on the road and of course all the other obstacles you might have heard about it um <laughs> but uh well, I kind of started touring again and I started kind of like getting bigger again right because I wasn't you know being as mindful about what I was eating and so that's like another that's another challenge I've always had on the road especially it's I have a way easier time at home maintaining what I eat and how much I eat because you're just you the, the choices are you have more choices. Like mm-hmm. we're going to finish this show. If I need to eat something, what do we do? Like it's going to be Burger King. It's going to be like, you right. Know, yeah. Taco and that's the most there. cost effective. Honestly, if you're out that for, too. you know, as long as you're going to be out for, you got to, you have a, you give yourself a per diem, you know, like, yes, you can't blow all your money in the first week because you went to Buffalo and you wanted anchor bar wings or something, you know, is and, that where I should go? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they created the wing. This is a little sidetrack. No, they created the wing, but uh, there are much better places around here. They are okay. so expensive. Don't go there. <laughs> is it like it's like a novelty because they, they, they created they, it? They created it so that's like the spot. Okay. For people who don't know and aren't local. Right. So, so it's, it's, like, it's like when you go to Philly 
And it's like, oh, well, you know, go to go to Pat's or Gino's. Yes, yes. And people are like, no, that's not the one. Yeah. You yeah. got to go to this one. Yep. And well, you know what? Well, I'm a tourist and I don't care. Yeah. So I'm going to go. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's another, another, maybe not a tour story necessarily, but like a tour. Insider. In, insights. In, in yeah. you know, um, just, just the way that it goes. Um, just one of the things you run into. But uh, what, how long have we been going? Let's see. Almost an hour. Uh, we're coming up on an hour. If you got we're one more, there. you got one go more. You want to give me one more? Item? Give me your best one. Let's hear it. Let's see. <sighs> I want to give you time to I'll rest go. your voice before you got to sing. Oh, uh, whatever. <laughs> this is how I like rest because I kind of talk like this, okay. but I sing really high. Yeah, I'm the same so, way. So like I'm, you know, I'm kind of do the. Mm -hmm. rrr, rrr. I feel that and when I get on stage, I'm like, <laughs> and then I think. Well, you're like Claudio from Cody and Cambria. It's the hair, man. Like, it's the hair, and you sing really high. I'm like, yeah, I get it. I'm just like him. Millions of dollars also. Mm -hmm. yeah. Following in his footsteps. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> let's see. Okay, I'll do a, I'll do a couple quick ones. So, um, and, then a, and then a good one. Uh, for, uh, in 2019, I got to cook Thanksgiving dinner for an entire tour of four bands in, um, uh, in Petersburg, Virginia. In some house that apparently, apparently, uh, Ulysses S. Grant had started writing the treaty to end the Civil War. That was big. Um, that didn't happen while we were there, but was uh, <laughs> uh, the band Home Safe, mm -hmm. uh, Kayak Jones, may they rest in peace, and um, Young Culture, okay, uh, and us were all on tour together for like two, like way too long. It was a long one. And uh, it was going through Thanksgiving. I'm like, what should we do? So we went on Airbnb and we found what was like a very old colonial house that could theoretically house us all. And um, we, you know, gathered as much uh, Thanksgiving feasty type stuff. And I got to, you know, with, with the help of a couple sous chefs, like I got kind of got to cook Thanksgiving for like, you know, all my guys and girls. And uh, that was really cool. That's great. Um, it was uh, full feast. Full oh, full feast. Full feast. Uh, so we that. we had to do the vegan side. We had to do the the you know not vegan. So I did the the, the turkey, the stuffing, everything. It was the, the whole schmeal, and um, it was uh, that was that was pretty fun. Yeah, and then when you go, all right, okay, here's another one. So we randomly Airbnb some things, and then maybe not now because the market's saturated, right? But sometimes you'll stumble upon some fun stuff. And usually, our band usually like sleeps on floors because we don't like to spend the money. But like, if we have no choice, we'll take a look. So uh, a year or two ago, we're on Airbnb. We have a random day off. And uh, we're like in this weird area of between Virginia and Pennsylvania. It's called West Virginia. It's very strange. And it's, it's, a, it's a place that I, I, I don't encourage anyone to ever go. <laughs> but if you're accidentally there... You can find some cool stuff. So a lot like of hills. A lot of hills. A lot and, of hills. And, and a lot of hill people. Yes. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> we had a random day off in like 2021. And um, we picked this Airbnb. It's 50 bucks. And it appears to be like this, what used to be like a, a, a Girl Scout camp or a sleepaway camp of some kind. It's got all the cabins. It's got a lake. It's got a bunch of stuff. They turned this into like a woodsy resort or a retreat so you still have the swimming you have like you know the sports you have a sauna that you can go do and enjoy you have all these fun recreational activities and it's like camping but not like there's a communal cabin where you go cook food and we stayed for one day that day mm -hmm. and but then we vowed this is like our thing so for the the intervening years we plan out like three to five days as a band where we just go and we retreat and we kind of bond as a group and, you know, kind of turn off. Uh, well, if so, the cell phones don't work that great anyway, but we kind of we kind of unplug and um, and kind of reaffirm ourselves as a group mm -hmm. of friends. And it's just a really, really cool little vacation thing that we do. It's okay. become like a tradition. So that's a that's a cool thing. I'll that's tell, awesome. Let's see. What else did I write down? Um uh, on our very first tour, we stayed in a heroin den. Oh. Um, but who hasn't? <laughs> uh, this is in Oklahoma City. Go fig. Um, place is horrible, so I would do heroin too. And uh, it's a joke. It's a joke. I have a lot of friends in Oklahoma. Shout out Cliff Diver. So, 
and the remaining members of the last slice. So, yeah, not a lot to that story. I stayed up holding a knife because I was afraid that uh, someone would just come in and rob our shit. Rightfully so. Yeah, so we met, we played a very small rinky-dink show, and we had nowhere to stay, and we're just, like, begging the crowd to help us out. And two very seemingly normal people um, at, yeah, come stay with us. We're going to be fine. Great. We can house all of you. It's like us and another band. And um, stayed. We get there. I'm looking around. And they have, they've got, like, a couple rooms just walled off. And a guard, like a lookout, like just someone at the window at all times, kind of going back and forth, escorting escorting different people in and out of the house and into the room. They only go in the room and they come out later. So I never went into the room, but I assessed the situation. I assessed the situation and uh, told the band, look, that's a Dan Cook reference, by the way. <laughs> um, I'm like, look. I don't know what kind of characters we're going to see, but I'm going to stay up with this knife. It's not here, but it's, I held it like that just in case. So nobody would see it. <laughs> they want to see me brandishing a knife in the middle of the heroin den. But I made sure they could sleep, and uh, I stayed up all night. And I, um, I listened to the premiere of the, the new Blink single, the first Blink single that came off of California. I have like, so they had the radio on. They're like, ladies and gentlemen, Blink-182 is back. And I was like... This kind of sucks, uh, but uh, here we go. Not, we'll listen to it. Not the, great. These are, this is what I remember of that night. Uh, so <laughs> that. All right, let's get one more to, to bring us home. One here. more, bring it home. Let's see. Uh, this is the most recent thing. This is the most recent story. This is the story of Keith flying in Sydney, Nebraska. You know the one. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we... Um, we, we get offered a tour with Less Than Jake and Boeing for Soup. Very Huge. exciting. Very Huge. exciting. Let's do it again. So um, it starts in Sacramento, California. That's not where we are right now. It's very far away. And so we, like any band would do, we tour our way out. Um, <laughs> and, you know, when you're touring, and it's like the middle of the country there's it, it's as boring as you would imagine. It's nothing there. Mm. It's nothing. And in fact, it's fascinating to me because I'm like, you guys chose this. Have you been out in like the middle, like mid we, we have Midwest? We like, have toured out. Yes, like, we've done full U.S. Okay. So. You know, like even like the like major highways, you just look out. There's doesn't nothing. been an exit for like 20 yeah. miles, but you see like a house. What are they doing? I want to know. What it's like to be them. Like, if I ever have time and I can, like, stop and figure out how to get to that house, I want to <laughs> knock on the door. I can, how do you know? Do you take the exit after? You have before? to, right? I don't know. One of them. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, that's what, like, Kansas is like. That's what Nebraska is like. Yeah. That's what they're all, they're like. everywhere. It's insane. Yeah. Like, you chose that. Yeah. What do you pay in mortgage? Is it expensive? Is there a discount for... Do they pay the, a mortgage? That's what I mean. Like, do they? Do, I would like. I would want to be paid. What are you live there? Property taxes I'm looking like? Dude, it's got to be nothing. <laughs> nothing. It's got to be nothing. I'm like, there's no way that you are a working person, right. And you choose to like. I just don't get it. <laughs> so I have to know what's going on. But anyway, I'm in that place. Okay. Um, the van that we borrowed uh, from our good friend uh, Jake Langley uh, of a band of the band Handguns. Uh, it it. Ex- explodes uh, fluid in the middle of the highway. We are nowhere. We are, we are well past any city you've ever heard of in Nebraska. Mm-hmm. So Omaha is far away. Lincoln is far away. We are almost to where Nebraska meets Wyoming. I didn't even know that Nebraska met Wyoming. I had no clue. <laughs> I'm no, saying, neither did I. No idea. Yeah. Right? I think that we're on our. We're trying to get to Laramie, Wyoming, again. <laughs> Why? Because we why? Because we had nowhere else to go. So we break down about two hours out. We're in a we're in a, a, a city. To call it a city is just an over embellishment. <laughs> Sydney, Nebraska. So we break down. Uh, we are God. Our phones didn't work at first, but then they did. And we got towed to whatever record place we could find. Now this is this is the day before. Now the drive was already crazy, 
So we were trying to play Laramie on the way to Sacramento. Mm-hmm. Sacramento's in two days. Laramie. Yeah. yeah, that's right, brother. You know the one. <laughs> so this this drive, this tour is already insane because we have to get way out there. We're we're starting like arguably one of the more important tours ever done, maybe the most important tour ever done in two days. So we break down. We're just we're already tired. It's hot. It's like we don't know where we are. We're so we're frightened. What are we gonna do? Where are we gonna sleep? They tow us over to this record guy, this kooky dude that runs this place. He's checking out the van. He's about as folksy as you can imagine he would be. Older guy, mm-hmm. cute little dog named Chuck, which is the name of our bass player, which we thought was very funny. That's hilarious. And um, he is assessing, and it's bad. It's bad. Like this, we're we are not going to be able to get this on the road in a day, in order to go to get to California, which we're still eighteen hours away. Right. Okay. So he takes it in. We're like praying. We're trying to figure this out. We're talking to the guy in Laramie for our show that that night. And he goes, this is like an hour, hour into us, like assessing the situation and everything. And like, he's like, you know, I might have something you can borrow so that we can, you know, maybe go play the show and uh, maybe come back here while we keep figuring out how to fix the van. And I'm, 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 we're like running out of time. So I'm skipping so many details that, that make this even, he's got like this crack staff of people who are just bumpkins like i don't even know what they've done all day but they were theoretically working but like they had yeah like he had to like call them in to like help them and they were working through the night it was crazy but he lent us a truck for us to go play the show in laramie okay for free nice guy for no money i'm incredible so we hop in this pickup truck we put all of our stuff in the back we drive the two hours to laramie play the show come back we sleep in the dusty auto shop we sleep in the auto shop now the next morning we're like, is there any chance we're gonna get this working? Still, I don't know if you've ever been on a road trip or like on a on a time schedule where a van breaks down or a vehicle breaks down, but like th- every minute is is crucial and full of anxiety of like, when do we call this? Like when do we when do we like shift gears right. and decide this is not working? We gotta do this. So. The overall arching point of this story is that miracles happen, and sometimes they happen in Nebraska. So not the guy is like, we need time to fix this. This is screwed up. It's like a diesel truck too, which is like more complicated. Yeah, specific people need to work on it. They have yeah. to be yeah. Whole oh, thing. he doesn't have this part. It's got yep. it's, it's another shit ass part of Nebraska. He's got to go get it and all this. <laughs> it's awful. So. We're like, okay, what do we do? How do we, we have to be in, we have to be in California tomorrow. So (laughs) as if like, okay, I'm standing here. There's like a, there's maybe 50 feet, 50 yards over there. Yards are different than feet. I know that. I'm sorry. So (laughs) that not this far away is a rental place. And we're like looking at it. In no, there's nothing here. There's one grocery store. There's a Safeway with a Starbucks in it where everybody goes and that's the only thing you do. And so we're just, there's a rental car place and there lo and behold is a 12 passenger van. And we just pray upon pray. We're like, listen, we need to borrow this van for about three weeks. Luckily, um, unbelievable too. The tour kind of the kind of brings us back through Sydney, Nebraska. Wow. So, we could plan it out. We're like, look, we have it for this many days. It gives this guy a time to fix our van. Can we do this? Yeah. And they charged us like, I don't know if you ever rented a car before. I have, but, but it's usually like 200 bucks d- d- for a week. Right. We're talking at least 14 days. It had to be 14 days. So it's like, it was the least amount of money that I've ever, ever seen for a rental that's like a lot of miles, right. a lot of days. A big vehicle full of stuff, full of people, and like we got the rental, and we. Long story short, we made the show, and then we had to swing through again to get the fixed van. <laughs> Which again, I wish the rest of my band was here so we could describe the dude, because I didn't really interact with him that much. But like 
he's just like you could you can't make this dude up like i'm trying to think of a like a just picture a cartoon farmer he's basically that yeah. guy he talks like that, and I don't want to do his accent because it would be it would be <laughs> offensive. But like, it's just like I, I can't believe that this is a real person who is fixing our van for again not a lot of money, right? Like, did not charge us a lot of money. He was just happy to do it, and um, I, we 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 made every show. We did it. That's huge. Um, and I, I think that I think that if I were a person who I was just if I were the person I described earlier in Seattle, and we did play Seattle on that tour. Um, I did not get kicked out. I had a great time. If I had been that person, we might not have had that miracle happen. Right. We might not have had the the the, the fortune to fall into that kind of situation. Mm-hmm. I think we that guy would have handled things probably a lot worse. Right. And it comes with the experience of being on tour for so long and 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 so much that uh, has made me and my band uh, far more well rounded people. And, Absolutely. Uh, and the, the moral story is, keep flying. Oh! Oh! oh. <laughs> He's spun it around at the end. He's good. Oh, shit. He should be on the show again, I think. I <laughs> would love to have Because there's more. Would love to have that. That'd be kind of cool. Henry, yeah. it's been a blast. You like how I, I concluded that shit? That's that was great. pretty dope, right? It's, it's been a blast. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for doing this. Dude, of course, man. The record is great. Go ahead and tell the people what you got going on. I'm Henry. I play in a band called Keep Flying. We put out an EP called Daylight. It will be a very, very fun 19, 20 minutes of your day if you listen to it. And uh, I want to thank, I want to thank everybody for watching. I don't want to thank you again yes. for having me on. Absolutely. And maybe we can do this again sometime. Absolutely, man. Next time we'll have a little bit more time. We won't get. Uh, bit... I want to be in the studio, dude. That's at my house anytime. I want to do that. Yeah. We, we have to. We have to like make sure the little the little human is like okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Right now she's she's only two weeks uh, as of yesterday, so it was kind of like we can't have people around yet. So all good. We made it work. All good. I, I appreciate mean, it. it that could, I mean, this is the most scenic area of Buffalo. <laughs> Luckily, all right, we started guys. Out. Story time pod across all platforms. Be sure to tell a friend, family member. Everything you need to know about Henry and Keep Flying is going to be down below in the description. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching the episode, and we'll see you next time. Yes, sir. Bye, bitch.